Hello and welcome to Prepared Leaders, where we'll teach you the secret formula you have been missing when it comes to self-improvement, and some leadership tips that will help you climb the ladder of success. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and turn on the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. Also, don't forget to leave a comment down below. If you've been a manager for a long time, you know that even in the best organizations, things can go wrong. Employees can act in a bad way for a number of different reasons. In this video, we're going to talk about 10 tips on how to deal with a difficult employee. Number 1. Be aware that problematic behavior typically has a past. In most cases, it develops over the course of time and then sells the products as a result of a single occurrence. As a manager, it is your responsibility to stay abreast of the early warning signs and to address the root cause of the problem before it becomes more severe. Number 2. Consider whether you are entirely or partially to blame. You would be surprised to learn how frequently problems with employee conduct are either directly or indirectly the result of actions taken by management. Abrasiveness is an inability to listen and a lack of attention to the intricacies of employee behaviors are all reasons why managers need to study what is happening in greater deal. Number 3. Don't just concentrate on the obvious conduct. When confronted by an irate employee, it is easy to criticize the individual and focus on the behavior rather than look at the underlying causes of the behavior. This frequently requires time, careful consideration, and a willingness to suspend judgment until you fully comprehend the circumstances. Number 4. Pay attention to the awkward silence and any information gaps. An employee's obvious reluctance to talk is nearly always a clue that there is more going on that meets the eye. Employees withhold frequently because they feel unsafe. They could try the waters by bringing up a less serious or related topic to gauge the reaction. The manager must read between the lines and provide the care and support required to get the employee to open up in order to learn the whole story and promote forthrightness. Number 5. Clarify before speaking to someone. When a problem first presents itself, it is likely that you will be given only a fragmented and insufficient picture of it at that time. It's possible that you'll need to conduct considerable research and talk to potential participants in order to unearth important details. It's safe to expect that everyone will present the topic from their own point of view, which might or might not reflect the reality of the situation. It is often required to make use of judgment in addition to conducting in-depth studies in order to obtain an accurate image. Number 6. Be open to considering whether you may have contributed to the issue. Even while you might think you know what you did to start the fire, it's possible that it's not as straightforward as you believe it to be. Ask yourself these questions. Is this a one-of-a-kind circumstance or does it sound like it could be related to anything that has occurred in the past? Are these behaviors shown by other people who are a part of my organization? Am I enabling others to engage in problematic conduct with my own words and actions? Number 7. Create a plan of action. Begin by outlining the improvements you would like to see in yourself, then go in the order listed. Inform the individual about the problem. Describe the issue as you understand it and explain why it needs to be fixed. Obtain the employee's agreement that you have appropriately stated the issue and that it has to be resolved. Using open-ended inquiries such as, what are you ready to do to fix this issue? In some circumstances, you might need to be explicit about what you expect. Obtain a promise from the employee that they will take the necessary steps. Establish completion dates for the task. In the event of a persistent issue, you might wish to inform the employee of the repercussions of failing to take corrective actions. Adhere to the due dates you've established. Number 8. Treat the staff with respect and demand adult behavior. Their outcome is partially defined by expectation. You can expect less than fully grown-up behavior if you make it clear through your actions, the words you use, or the way you hold yourself. Number 9. Handle interpersonal disputes differently. Have both employees respond to these questions to determine whether the problematic conduct is a result of a personality clash between them. What would you say about the other individual? How does he or she make you feel? 
Why do you think they act the way they do? Is there anything you can do to make things better? What actions do you want the other person to take in response? Number 10. Look for consensus on the actions to be performed and the expected outcomes. There is no true fix until the fix holds. All parties to a dispute must concur that the actions performed or suggested will significantly lessen the issue. Additionally, they must agree on what they will do if the outcomes are not what they had hoped for. This can be accomplished by performing a straightforward roleplay in which each side, including your own, outlines the actions to be taken and the expected results. In this manner, the lines of communication for altering the situation are left open even if the following circumstances are drastically different from what are anticipated. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and turn on the notification bell so you'll know when I upload new content. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you in my next video.